Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the content switch on a scroll as well as how to make the smart breadcrumbs. So if a user, let's say, would click on distribution habitat, the design would scroll down to that distribution habitat topic and users could just jump back and forth. Now, for some of you, this might not be anything new. However, the caveat here is that I'm going to show you how to also make this one sticky so it's always present as a breadcrumb option but also when the user scrolls down to let's say the third paragraph we are gonna toggle and and kind of walk them from show them exactly which paragraph is active at the moment on the screen so there is a lot of different things here and it's gonna combine a lot of different functions it's not hard to do but there are some nuances which you should know and we should dive right into so i'm gonna go ahead and just set up my you know sketch design into action and let's start off with that so i set up all my assets as you can see it's quite close it's a direct copy from what i had in sketch previously and if i preview as always since it's good to preview before you start and as you go, I, s I have this wildcat type of knowledge base, let's say, like sort of like a Wikipedia for, you know, wild nature reads, let's say, or something like that, fictitious brand. So you can see I have a lot of different content in it. And what I want to do, as discussed before, I want for these sticky bits on the left hand side to always remain visible as I scroll down, but also that they would update. So let's say if I'm on characteristics, the characteristics should glow and be active. And if I click on something else, it should just take me down to a specific page bit. So let's start by making the left hand side sticky if the user scrolls down. I'm gonna go ahead and just create something which you probably know already, which is dynamic panels. So I'm gonna, I created already a header dynamic panel. I'm gonna go ahead and just take all those objects on the left hand side. Just right click, create dynamic panel and just give it a name. So let's say sidebar, right? And let's make it sticky. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our header sticky by pin to a browser option under style tab and just do it top left simple like that and then do the same for our sidebar dynamic panel and say left and we can even set margin if we want to that's done and if we preview like so and we scroll down our content remains on the left hand side let's go ahead then and make these actionable so if you remember from our videos what we would want to do is then create hotspots for each of the let's say intro we can create a hotspot for that and maybe place it just a little bit above it like so and give it a name so let's say this is intro and then i'm gonna make one for characteristics and the idea between place it placing it above the headline is because you want to leave some white space before the headline is dropped. Otherwise, the edge of the screen is literally going to be at the start of the text and that's not ideal. Uh, and so we make one for distributions. So we cr we're creating a end spots of where the screen has to scroll down to if the user clicks something and the same for frets, which is our last bit. Again, spend your time mastering and crafting the visuals. This is really quick and dirty. It's pure material design for now. And we have those hotspots selected. Now I'm just gonna go ahead inside the things and I'm probably just gonna create really quick hotspots like so and say on click, just scroll the page to a widget and select, let's say intro. We can animate it, so I would like to ease probably out so that it slows down. We can have half a second maybe. I could just copy the hotspot like so. Just cover the text or you could make it a full width. It's really up to you. Just don't forget as you copy to change the actual widget you want to target. So this is characteristics. This is distributions. An evolution we have as well. 
And lastly is threats. So now in theory, if I did everything correct, if we click on those tiny bits, it should take us to different parts of the screen. Like so. But as you can see, as I said, because we have some overlap, uh, the, the screen cuts off the thing. So the easy fix here is to actually just go back where we placed the hotspots like so and just push it up a little bit. Even if it overlaps other content, it's gonna look so much better if the user scrolls down. So be generous with the white space as always. So characteristics, as you can see, it looks so much better now with all the white space around it. And I think it kind of works. It looks pretty good. Now, one bit what's missing here and what I would want to do is to make create like um, an active state. As you can see, at the moment, we have only one active state for intro and everyone else is not active. So we need to highlight and give feedback to the user that, hey, this is actually clicked in, this is active, and this is what you are reading. So um, I would go ahead and just create dynamic panels out of all of them. I'm going to drag away the hotspots for now. We can keep them because, you know, the functionality is already done. So why not? And just go ahead, right click the intro and make that into dynamic panel like option one, let's say. And intro. Don't forget to add some clarification because you might get lost after a while. And I'm going to say this is active state and we need another state just duplicate it and make it a default state. And the default state should really come first naturally, but since it's active by the from the get go, and you load the page, then might as well keep it like that. If you go in default state, what we need to simply do is make the text, let's say regular, because I had it bolded and remove the other bits like so. Now I'm gonna probably go ahead and just duplicate it. I mean, you can either create one by one or you can duplicate it. Just remember exactly what the copy is. So I'm going to remove the copy and place it there and do it for every single item. X. That's the active. And then the default is just text. Six. And I'm going to place it as default first, like so. So as you can see, we have a dynamic panel, we can even resize it like so. And when one is active, one is not. Last thing, don't forget to clarify the names for each of the dynamic panels here. As you can see, I have old names. So you might want to just check because we are going to target them. I'm going to place all the hotspots on top. And we are going to go ahead and say on click where we have that scroll down. We are also going to insert another action and say set panel state and just to make it like a different state, let's say. So on click, we know that every time the thing is clicked, it has to be active. So it's really easy. So I'm going to go option one, set it to active. And then we're going to go ahead and set every other option to default. Now, why we're doing this, it's just to avoid so that there are multiple things clicked and visually they, they wouldn't be too appealing to the user. As you can see, actually allows it to do it really quickly. And here I have one is active, other ones are set to default. I'm just gonna copy that behavior, all the other bits like so, and just switch it around. So the second one is active, everyone else is not. Copy again and do so for every single item on a list. Boom. And now in a few minutes, we made a fully functional bit. As you can see, it scrolls down, up and down. It has a good switch between the things. And it works pretty well, if you ask me. It, it doesn't break. It does what we need. Now, the last bit here, what we need to do is to do it on scroll, meaning what happens if the user scrolls down now to characteristics. The breadcrumbs here should change, shouldn't they? So let's go ahead and do so. It's quite easy to do. I'm gonna start with, we basically, on a kind of like a logic level, we need to detect exactly where the user scroll position is. 
So let me exactly show you how it's done in practical level. So I don't just tell you, I actually want to show you. So first of all, we need to create a scroller. And a scroller is basically like an object which when it touches something, we need to do some sort of action. So I'm gonna create it manually. And as you can see, I have this, let's say, let's make it like one pixel big line, which we can only, us can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable the border like so. And I'm gonna add it like a color so you can actually see what's happening to it. Let's increase it a little bit like so. And I'm going to go ahead and convert it into dynamic panel. And I'm going to give it a name, let's say scroller, like this. As you can see, we have just a line. And I'm going to make it fixed. Because we don't need it to float somewhere and overlap interactive elements. Because they're going to become static and you cannot do anything with it. So we're going to just pin it to browser as usual. And we're going to pin it to bottom, to very, very bottom. And every time the page loads, I'm going to have that line. Of course, I'm going to make it invisible in the end, but this is just so you know exactly why what's happening. And now if you remember, we have those hotspots placed, which are invisible elements where we scroll to. So what I'm going to do in action, I'm going to say once this orange bit overlaps one of the hotspots, for example, like characteristics one, it would just switch that. So every time our orange bit, you know, it could invisible bit, whatever, like a scroller bit overlaps one of the hotspots before this headline, we are going to switch the breadcrumbs around. So that's a basic logic behind the scenes. So you know exactly why and how it's, it works. So I'm going to go ahead and add an action to our canvas. So if you deselect everything and just say interactions, add new interaction and say scroll on Windows scroll, we're going to say set panel state of, let's say our options, let's say character two, we're going to set it to default. And we are also going to add a condition to it. So if, so let's say if the orange bit, our scroller is over that hotspot, activate this characteristics headline. So we're going to add logic and we are going to do area of widget scroller as you can see it automatically selects is over area of widget and we select the hotspot which is characteristics and then basically it's going to launch to add active let's test it out it's basically going to be like this i'm going to scroll down this orange bit is going to go over this hotspot and then this is going to change let's see if that actually works in practice boom it did as you can see it updated now, the remaining bit, what we need to do is also deactivate the intro. So just like we did before, let's create that type of logic where let's say every time we do something, we disable the other ones. So we're going to set it to default. We're going to set that to default. We're going to set remaining. And as you can see, Axure disables the options for us. So it's really great. And now every other option is disabled, so characteristic is going to remain active. And we are going to go ahead and just copy and paste that if statement and toggle it to an if, because we're going to have multiple statements like so. Right click it and toggle it and rename the case to case two, because if you have a case of the same name, it's just going to get confused. So have case two and then change it to, let's say, to next. Uh, next area, which is I think if I'm correct is distributions. Yes, it is distribution. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to also change the state of it. So I'm going to disable the second option to default. And the distributions, which is the third one, I'm going to select it to active. And now you have two statements, one is for characteristics, one is distribution, and then we can copy paste, do it for evolution threats and intro in the end, because you always can get back and then, you know, activate the intro. So that's how you do it. And let's go ahead and just, you know, mass produce this and go ahead and create different if statements. I'm going to copy paste and do all that jazz. So here we go. 
we created every statement for every of these bits. I have five statements, five ifs, and five cases with setting the sta panel state and switching it. The only thing where it's left is really just to make this invisible. So I'm gonna go ahead inside and just decrease the fill to nothing like so. So we still have that scroller available. I'm also gonna increase the sizes of the, of the correct, let's say characteristics blocks like so. So all the hotspots, um, it's gonna add a little bit more, I think, because basically the scroller is quite small, so it might not always pick up what we need it to pick up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do so, and we'll do the same for threads. So it's gonna provide us with a little bit more flexibility of how to target the intro, let's say. So let me just do it like so. And as you can see, we we'll land on intro, we can go to characteristics and go down. We can go to distribution and it takes us down. And if we want to scroll down, let's say like so, boom, evolution got triggered. If we want to scroll down more, boom, threads got triggered. And if we go up like so, characteristics. So it's quite easy to do so. And as you can see, it's pretty neat and it's dynamic. That's probably what you're looking for. As usual, leave a like, subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be covering more cases. Um, I hope you liked and enjoyed this video and it was useful and I'll see you next time.